Okay, obviously, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is not the best video game sequel ever made. It's it's a really good sequel, but it's not the best. I just put that so people would click on this video. Obviously. What are you, idiots? You think I'd actually believe that? But it is pretty good, and the game itself alone is pretty good. So, let me explain that to you. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Hello, welcome to Tanner Reviews, the new show where I will look over media and give my opinion on it, and uh, some of the facts along the way. It's just a general review. In today's episode, we will be looking at Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Sega Genesis, a game which I chose for the first episode because, well, it was my first ever video game, and so it holds a special place to me. Let's take a look at it. Now, Sonic has had an interesting reputation. Some people really enjoy the good games. Me, for example, I'm a huge fan of Sonic. But, um, some, some people hate the franchise. You know, some, some people around me just don't really like it that much. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that Julian? My good pal Julian from his hit YouTube channel that you should go check out. That'll be at the end card of this video. Julian, what's going on, man? Are you, are you here to talk about Sonic? Yeah, I fucking hate Sonic. Oh, shit. Well, why don't you tell me about that? Let's get your side of, of this coin. All right. So my, my question is, why is Sonic so popular? And in order to understand why Sonic is popular, we have to look at the game. And when you look at Sonic, what happens when you play Sonic? You play Sonic because you want to go fast. That's the whole tagline of the game. You play Sonic because you're playing as a fucking blue hedgehog who has a terrible design, but I'll get to that later, maybe. And then, so you're playing as Sonic, and you start running, and you're like, this is so fun. I'm running, I'm at the speed of light, this is so fucking sick, right? And you run for two seconds, and you get hit. And you lose all those rings you've been collecting. Man, you're telling me that's a fucking fun game when you can't see anything ahead of you. And you're just supposed to know when to jump? It makes no sense. It's it's bullshit. It's not fun to play. If you ever said that you had fun playing the original Sonics, you're lying. You're lying. It's not true. I can understand 3D Sonics, maybe. I'm not a big fan of those games, but I can understand that. But 2D Sonics, you literally don't know what you're doing. You're getting punished for no reason. Versus in like a Mario game, you see a Goomba, you jump on it. It's not hard. It's very simple. In Sonic, you just start running. And if you hit something, ha. Huh, Fuck you. I guess you're losing all your rings, buddy. It's like, Jesus Christ, it's not even fair. The only time I enjoy Sonic is when it's kind of a guided level, if that makes sense. And, you, and then every time you get hit, it's your fault. Because, the, you know, the enemy has been telegraphed well, and you can jump over it in a fair amount of time. But most of the time when you're playing Sonic, they expect you to know everything about the map. Which is bullshit. I'm sorry. That's why I hate Sonic. You know, I... Th th taking it from that perspective, I really can't blame you, but, you know, I personally like Sonic, and I, I can get into that. It's because you're fucking crazy, that's why, Tanner, but we all love you, it's fine. Sonic 2 was released in 1992 on November 21st in Japan, and in the West on November 24th of the same year. Fun fact about its release date, it was released on a Tuesday in the West, so Sega advertised it as Sonic Tuesday, spelt, spelt with a 2. Isn't that just a true display of creativity? Though, before we get really into the nitty gritty, why not get you familiar with the franchise that I love? Well, this game specifically. So, here's my short little segment called Quick Facts. So, in old Sonic Genesis games, you could get random cheats through the sound test by putting in codes. Stuff like extra lives, continues, but. For some reason, if you put in 19921124, the game will permanently play the Oil Ocean Zone music until reset. I mean, I can't really think of how this could help you unless you really fucking like the Oil Ocean Zone theme, but, you know, it's a cool fact, I guess. 
in the original prototype there was two cut zones wood zone and uh, and uh, genocide city zone <laughs> yeah so um my best guess is well maybe thought the americans you know were like oh the japanese the way the japanese says that word is pretty cool and then you know the japanese are like oh you want to use that word all right but do you know what it translates to yeah it translates to genocide or maybe there's a mistranslation between them. Uh, anyway, there's a somewhat playable version of Wood Zone on a prototype build, and Genocide City Zone is broken in that build, but there is some concept art of what could have been. This is pretty well known, but if you plug your Sonic 2 cartridge into the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge, you can actually play as Knuckles in Sonic 2. And, like, by the way, that is an awesome concept. Plug this game into this game, and now you can play as this character in that game? That's insane! I mean, I guess nowadays with crossovers and whatnot, I guess it's not that crazy. But anyway, a weird bug would happen when you play as Knuckles, though. Whenever you would enter a special stage, you'd come back with the same amount of rings you entered in, which, in the usual game, you'd usually lose your rings, so, you know, you can't just immediately go to the next special stage, you have to earn it. And it made the game a lot more easier as Knuckles in terms of collecting the Chaos Emeralds, but with bosses, not so much. On the title screen, if you press up, 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 down, 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 up, it changes Tails' name to Miles, which is his name in Japan. If you have a Japan copy and do the same, Miles' name will be changed to Tails. It's a vice versa thing, because they're called different names in different places. This was a year after Sonic 1 released, so they wanted Sonic 2 to be bigger, better, faster, which they achieved. Sonic 2 takes the original formula and changes it to be much more fun and keep the speed going. Thanks to an early Sonic 2 prototype dumped online, we actually found out Sonic 2 was literally built off of Sonic 1. Sonic 2 added multiple new features, things such as getting rid of the speed cap from the original, the horrible spike glitch where you die if you bounce on spikes twice, a 7th Chaos Emerald, and probably the best choice, the Spin Dash. The Spin Dash was an ability given to Sonic where you could rev up and zoom off from a standstill. Sonic 2 has 7 zones and 2 acts for each zone, the perfect ratio, because 3 in the previous game was way too many. This video isn't about its history though. So, let's start with... Sonic 2's gameplay is similar to Sonic 1, but much more fast-paced, faster zones, and better platforming. Sonic controls very well, Tails is there, and the game isn't too easy or too hard. The gameplay is more fast-paced, which is perfect, since two specific zones from the first game interrupts that speed and flow. The special zones are whatever, they work. The gameplay is done well, but it gets better in later games. But, gameplay in Sonic 2 really complements the... Sonic 2's level design is fast-paced and well done most of the time. They still haven't made a good water level. That's Sonic 3's job. There are some good zones though. Some favorites that stand out is Chemical Plant, Casino Night, and Mystic Cave. Though there are some that I rather dislike. One that stands out is Oil Ocean. Slow, random obstacles and annoying enemies. Don't get me wrong. When it's a good level, it's a really good level. The fun, high-speed levels with good level design is a blast to play through. The level design is about the same as Sonic 1. The higher path, you get rewarded, but it take skill to get to, while well, lower path is filled with punishment for not playing well, and the occasional middle path is just whatever. In my opinion, a well-made Sonic level is following that formula, with interesting badniks and well-placed, fair obstacles. <laughs> Oil Ocean Zone! <clears throat> but of course, let's talk about the special stage. The half-pipe special stage is simple. Collect the amount of required rings three times while avoiding bombs. They can be pretty fun, but also really annoying, especially when Tails has a lot of rings, then you lose them all thanks to his delayed jump. Most of the special stages are similar. It's just a matter of knowing the stage, and of course, the most important part of the zones... <laughs> the 
Sonic 2 has 7 zones, so in turn it has 8 bosses. Uh, wait, um, oh, okay, so let's go through them and discuss what bosses are great and which ones are not so great. I'm gonna shoot at these one at a time, just to really get the full feel for all of these bosses. And so you can too. Okay, uh, uh, this isn't in the script, but I'd just like to state that all of these bosses I got off the Sonic Wikipedia, so, um, all these boss names. So, uh, yeah, Drill Eggman <laughs> is the first boss of the game, and he's perfect the way he is. It introduces bosses at the end of the second act, and it keeps it simple for that. And even a little surprise at the end to let you know to expect anything. The chemical plant boss is interesting. The boss itself is simple. The real kicker is the terrain. Platforms that can make you fall, making your safe area dangerous and small. The platforms and constant attack make a great amount of stress and difficulty for the player. Hammer Eggman is the, well, too easy. You can easily cheese the boss and take it out in seconds. It makes it unfun and, well, not exciting. And even if you fight it right, its attacks are very boring and uninteresting. The, the closest thing to being something interesting or cool would be the terrain where the cool little statues come out of the ground, but it doesn't do it any justice. Is there even a specific way to beat this boss? <laughs> I mean, like, as a kid, it was never really clear to me. You can spin dash up the side, use the pr prong things. The attacks weren't aren't very effective. They just sort of drop. And this boss takes way too long for my liking, but... You know, it, it looks cool aesthetically. It has, um... Th things going for it. This boss can be beaten almost immediately. I I mean, I do find its attacks interesting, but you barely have enough time to see them. The boss is just way too easy. I feel like give it more specific times to hit it could fix that, but I'm not too sure on that. This boss is actually pretty cool. The fact that the rebel is the attack is pretty interesting, but I feel the opportunity of attack is a little too large, and it's a little too easy for my taste. There's really not much to say about this one. Okay. This boss has really interesting attacks, and an intense terrain that makes it scary to fight. Its attacks can be unexpected and pressure to player, but it's as its submarine brethren suffers from, it can be defeated too quickly. Same as the last. It could use a shorter opportunity of attack. Other than that, solid boss. I love this boss's design and a little gimmick. Like, come on. Mini Eggman hatching from eggs? What more could you ask for? You can defeat it before all eggs hatch, but if you hatch them, he even has a special laser attack. I love this little gimmick and enjoy this boss a lot. This boss's gimmick is very fun. The hitbox is on the roof, and the only way up is platforms with spikes on the bottom. And on top of all that, the hitbox shoots a giant laser every little bit, and every laser shot makes the walls close in on you more. This boss is wonderfully designed to perfectly pressure the player. It causes a sense of anxiety, and I think it has a perfect amount of opportunities for attacking. This boss is just really well made, and extremely fun to fight. Solid boss. I would like to add now that this boss is not the one whose walls slowly close in. I was thinking of a different boss, but I still like this boss a lot. Uh, anyway, but, 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 never mind. Silver Sonic is an interesting boss. It's the first iteration of Metal Sonic. That's awesome. Metal Sonic's awesome. The boss has very simple attack patterns, but having no rings makes it scary. Because of having no rings, it makes one of the easiest bosses extremely intimidating. 
One half of his body is a hitbox where you can damage him, and the other half damages you. Meaning, your hits have to be very precise. Them choosing to get rid of the rings is a very smart choice that makes this easy boss one of the most intimidating. But this is especially present with the Death Egg Robot. The Death Egg Robot is the final boss of the game. And its presentation is amazing. This is how a final boss should look. It's a face down in space against a giant robot where its hitbox is tiny. I mean, having no rings makes this boss intense. Its opportunity of attack is very small, with almost everything can damage you. As a final boss, the difficulty is perfect. The boss, though, is a 12 hit instead of the usual 8, but I think that's a needed to make the final boss the intimidating powerhouse it is. Defeating the boss, well, it leads to the very end of... The story of Sonic 2 is very simple, so this section should be short. So anyway, here's the story. Tails is here now. Why... Uh, um, yeah, something along the lines of that. But also, uh-oh, Dr. Robotnik's back, and also there's a 7th Chaos Emerald now, because sure. But it introduces Super Sonic, which became a staple of the series, and... It always comes back, but the story goes, Sonic runs a lot, and he always runs after Robotnik everywhere, so Robotnik builds a giant space station, because Sonic can't run to space, uh, but then he does, kinda. He flies at one point. A anyway, Sonic blows up his robot, and then the Death Egg, and he flies out of Super Sonic and saves the day. It's essentially the same as Sonic 1, but it's, it's very simple, but um, it's... You know, there, there's space, there's Tails, there's Chaos Emerald, there's Doc, Doc, Dr. Eggman, Robotnik. Yeah, um, it's it's a really simple story. It's a game from the 90s, what do you expect? Okay, I, 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 don't, I have no clever transition into the last title card. So, just pretend I said something cool to transition into... Okay. It is no secret that Sonic music is straight fire, but does Sonic 2 hold up to that? Uh, well, well, yeah, obviously. Pretty much every track on this bad boy is a banger. My favorite has got to be Chemical Plant or Death Egg Zone. Each track fits the zone it's for, and they all sound good. In my opinion, at least. I've been using Sonic 2 music this entire video, so you can form your own opinion based on that. Sonic 2 does have some... Rough edges, but overall it's a pretty good time. It took the world by storm on its infamous Sonic Tuesday. I think there's just always been something special about Sonic that would guarantee his break into the mainstream. I think as a follow-up to Sonic 1, Sonic 2 did an amazing job. It took what you already knew but added new elements and more interesting ideas, and I think without Sonic 1 this wouldn't be as effective. As a kid, this game was amazing. Like, Sonic went to space, come on! Sonic 2 was my first ever game, and its effect it had on me was for the better. Sega cared and they wanted to make this game great. Yuji Naka wanted to make this game great. And I think they definitely succeeded. My final score for Sonic the Hedgehog 2 will sit at a kind 9 out of 10. If I were to introduce someone to the Sonic series, well, the game I'd pick for sure 
is Sonic Mania. Play Sonic Mania. It's the best Sonic game ever made. Oh my god. Hey, thanks for watching the first episode of my new review series. More coming uh, uh, soon enough. <laughs> Um, thank you so much to my friend Julian for coming on for an appearance. Go check out his channel link uh, on on this very end screen that you're looking at right now while my, while, while my voice is playing. <laughs> Alright, bye.